Let's do an example of finding volume of revolution. These are the ones where you're going to be having a region that's revolving around an axis going in a circle. So this one says we're going to find the volume of the solid enclosed by these graphs, and it's revolving around the x-axis. Well, first thing I want to do with any volume problem is draw the region so I can tell what's happening. So this is a parabola. It's shifted up 4. Here's 4. And it's negative x squared. So it is going to be going down. Let's figure out what our x-intercepts are. So if y is 0, then this is going to be negative 2 and 2. Okay, going down something like that, something like that. And then we're going to have y equals 0, which is, of course, the x-axis. So the region that I'm looking at here is this that I'm shading in orange. It's that region. And I'm revolving around the x-axis. So this is my axis of rotation. So if you can kind of picture what that would look like, this orange part is going to come out of the page and circle around the x-axis. So if I'm going to slice this into circles, which you want to do for revolving, then to make it into circles, I need to slice it this way. So I'm drawing a bar to show the slice. Um, or you can remember if it's around the x-axis, your bar needs to go down to the x-axis is another way you can think about it. So because my bar is up and down, I know that this is going to be a dx problem. Up and down means dx. So everything needs to be in terms of x. Let me see if my equation's in terms of x. And okay, it is. So I'm good on that. Don't need to rewrite. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out the area of that shape. And the slice for a revolving one is going to be a circle. So area is pi r squared. I'm trying to find the area of one of those circle slices. Um, if you want to kind of picture what it's going to look like, I'm not great at drawing the 3D version of it, but it'll be some sort of almost like a ball looking thing, but kind of kind of uh, elongated like that parabola. And so when I'm making my circle slices, they're, they're coming down like this through it. So I need to find the radius of one of those slices. Well, if you check out my picture, especially this 3D version, the radius is this bar that I've drawn. That is the radius because the shape would keep going down here. So that is the radius. And to find the length of it, the radius goes between the function and the x-axis. It's the distance between. To find distance, you want to subtract. So we can do top minus bottom. So the thing on the top, I'll write that down, top minus bottom. And the function on the top is this parabola. So we have negative x squared plus 4. The function on the bottom is just 0. So it's, you know, minus 0. But you don't really have to write that. So that's the radius of one of these circles. And then to find the area, we're going to have pi times the radius squared. So pi times this whole thing squared. Now, remember, that is just a formula that would find the area of any one of these circles. But we're looking for volume, the volume of this whole kind of basketball-like shape. And it's made up of many circle slices. They're circles the whole way. So we want to basically add up all of the possible circles to get the whole volume. And that would take forever, but luckily for us, that's what integrals do. They add everything together. They find totals. They find accumulation. So I have the area of any one of those circles. If I put it in an integral, it's going to add them up. So my volume is going to be the integral of my area, which is pi times this function squared. We already determined this is dx. 
And so then my bounds, because it's dx, my bounds are gonna be my x values, which go from negative two up to two. So solving this integral will get me my volume. And I'm gonna do that in the calculator. So if I pull out my calculator to find integrals, I go to math, and then I'm gonna scroll down until I get to fn int, definite integral. Then I'm gonna put in my bounds, put in pi. When I put my function in, make sure you get any parentheses that you need. It will make a difference. And then this is dx. And it looks like my volume will be 107.233. Remember, leave three decimal places. Three decimals. All right, so that's my volume.